will be more recent. It'll be a year old. A year and two years old. Right. And, but the protection in that is what I discussed earlier. They actually review our bills as we send them in, and we are actually providing the services. So there's usually a two year safe harbor, but we don't really, quite frankly, that's not a, a real risk to wait for a full two years because they're actually reading, reviewing the bills as we send them in. Is that correct? Yes. Thank you. Uh, parking fees. Let's talk about the importance of parking fees versus the work out of the administration. What's your, my um, hope when we talked about it last year was that having parking fees would be another um, almost mandate for people, students to know that people are in the parking lot um, throughout the day on an unexpected, um, which would be Good for the social emotional needs of teenagers. Okay, okay can I just interrupt yes. and, and see whether we have other issues related to the three year plan? And oh, then, sure. And then yep. get to that. We may be done, but I just want to make sure we're done with that. Yep. Okay. I actually did have a question. Okay. Um, and then we'll and get back to that. No, that's fine. Okay, It'll thanks. be really quick. Just um, can you, you're averaging a $125,000 prediction for the Medicaid. But the, the issue of uh, increased enrollment of kids with you know, special needs and learning, how is that, um, is that going to cover them enough? I mean, is it, is, are we going to hope that this is, is the average amount that's going to be a, a good you know, safety net for these, these children? Or, um, or do you, will you potentially get more because we've got more of a higher population coming in? Yeah, they're really two different things. Um, we need to provide the services to that population right. you described, regardless of whether any of those services are reimbursable. So even if Medicaid didn't reimburse us, we would still have to provide the service. So the kids will get the service, and the fact that we might get reimbursed from some of this is sort of gravy, if you will. Okay, so that Medicaid is not really contingent on any kind of number. It, it, it just it's, here it is, what, it is what you're going to get this, this year. Right. And we take a look at our expenses right. and see if right. any of our expenses qualify for reimbursement. Right. Um, I'm sorry. David? I have a revenue question on the three-year plan, but also to further address your question, if we actually have an increase in services that we can charge to Medicaid, we can get reimbursed for that. The question is, it still has to fit into a tightening um, requirements of, of what they're going to reimburse. And it's fairly complicated. Right. We, in the past, we're, we're reimbursing a bundle basis, which is where you get more money. Now it's separated out and it's high. But if we have somebody comes in that we, that Don can qualify as Medicaid, and the rules are, are whatever they are, we could get more than 125. So it is somewhat dependent on the type of students we have and what we can send out. but. It's not going to be much money. I think this is a fairly conservative money out of some. Um, my question is on the um, revenue we're, we're allocating from the state. In our three-year plan, we're assuming the same amount. Um, uh, I, I, I guess I'm wrong. Uh, uh, revenue from the state was 1.953 this year. I thought it was. I thought we kept it the same. This, this year it was 1.9. Next year it's going to be 2.2 .2 if the budget the legislature is considering stays. Okay, so that's what they've told us they'll give us for next year. Yes. And we plugged it, that same number without any increase for the next following second and third fiscal year coming up. Right. Now, the questions I have or the points I want to make is that assumes that there aren't change in the legislature in terms of how they're going to allocate the money. Is that correct? Correct. And there is some movement in the legislature. They may go to a more income base as opposed to property base, which would naturally hurt CAPE. Is that correct? They would. They would. Um, and you're, but we've managed to get increases the last couple of years, which is nice and quite frankly surprising given our history. So you've simply taken that and sort of balanced the chances that there'll be your crystal ball and my crystal ball, that something's going to change the legislature. You sort of balance that 
And by keeping that number flat, there's probably a good balance between them maybe changing it and maybe ours going up again. Is that correct? Yes. We're just running with a number that we know. You know, if that was $300,000 less, we'd be running with that number, or if it was $300,000 for this exercise. You know, I think you're going to be giggling at this plan next year when you look at it. I mean, don't get the idea that this is precise science. Uh, just <laughs> want to we won't be crying. Right? Yeah. 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 No, giggling would be a good thing. Right? I can say, I that is yet different. <laughs> so, um, I think it's, what we're just trying to make sure is that you, you wouldn't use that, that Medicaid money this year and um, put all your eggs in one basket kind of approach. I would like to clarify, even though Kim was being funny, I look at these numbers as I do three-year projections all the time, and quite frankly, when you get to years two and three, it's, it's guesstimates. But I find these to be reasonable, conservative, such that we're keeping our taxes as low as possible, but not so unrealistically low that we're going to get caught with a real shortfall. But on the other hand, um, who knows what the state of Maine will do? Who knows what the state legislature will do? And that's a big ticket item. Um, this is, I think, a reasonable, prudent projection. Um, but you, that it is a projection. And people should be aware that a year from now, we could have been wrong. And we may have to ask for a higher tax increase than we anticipated. Or we may. I doubt this, that all of a sudden the state's going to give us more money than we're expecting, but it'd be nice. But these are just projections. And I think they're based on reasonable assumptions. That's all. Thank you. Are there other questions on the three-year plan? I just want to thank, thank you, Ken, for putting it together, and, and Pauline as well. I'm sure you, you, your fingerprints are all over it. it, it for me, it's very helpful to see um, you know, how the numbers may, may shape, be shaping up over time. Um, particularly in terms of planning, um, you know, how, the, how that planning affects this year's budget. So um, I understand that uh, all these numbers are subject to change, but it's, it's, uh, it's very helpful to be able to see what uh, we might be looking at two and three years down the road. So thank you. Um, and so at this point, um, I think we have time to turn to any um, open issues that have come out of these uh, budget conversations uh, that we may want to circle back to, and, and um, I guess we'll I'll let you start, Kate, with, with the parking fees. Well, I guess, um, but sorry to... No, that's all right. I saw a parking fee, and I just imagined if we took the 8000 out, out in the three-year plan, um, how would we be willing if we took the 8000 out? From the work in the past, I'm, the reason why the parking fees are in here, I know we voted on it last year for a reason. Um, and the reason was that we needed all the revenue that we could get. And so that instead of cutting teachers, we put in the parking mm -hmm. fee. So this year, I'd love to ask Ken what you are. Um, I, I, know, I understand we still have a need. There's still a need for revenue. Um, but as we've done a year of experience with Jeff and Troy going through the high school, um, is that worth? Well, I, I was worried about that. that, as you know, you're yeah. concerned about you know high school administrators having to be parking meter maids. Um, but in asking Jeff, it's not as much uh, labor-intensive work as I anticipated. So I'll let Jeff and Troy answer. Your question. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I, I think we've been able to administer it honestly more efficiently than I expected or feared, but what I don't want to do is have any illusion that parking fees are, because we have parking fees, therefore we are going to be having any sort of constant, regular administrative supervision of the parking areas, because in my view that would be a waste of time. Um, w what we've done um, is we have a series of warnings. Actually, for the first couple of weeks, I was in the junior parking lot in the mornings as kids were coming in to try to, in a very friendly way, let them know that the fees had been increased and, and why, and to have a conversation. And then after that, we had several levels of warnings that we did, um, culminating ultimately in just letters going home to a very tiny number of parents because everybody else had caught up. And then after the letters went out, everybody 
um, pay their parking fees. Um, and I think, how many times have we been out there, Troy? Three or four times, I think? I think it's four. Four times. Um, it took us about, I would say, a sweep of the parking lots is about 45 minutes. Um, there's probably about an hour's worth of follow-up after that, just entering information in spreadsheets and that sort of thing. So, I mean, we've been able to do it efficiently in a way that doesn't take a lot of time. And um, Troy might, I'm trying to interpret his, <laughs> if I'm getting daggerized or not. But I think in terms of administrative time, it's, we're not investing a lot. Um, if the desire is that the parking fees become a way to have a much more constant administrative presence out there, I don't want to create any illusions because I, I um, don't think that would be a good use of, of, of time uh, right now. Thank you. I guess that was my, that's I guess my question is that the reason I was doing parking fees was so that there was more um, walk through using the parking lot as part of a classroom environment and so there would be some more supervision where we don't have cameras there and there's uh, paraphernalia in the parking lot as trash. So that was my, one of the reasons um, I was including parking fees in. So that really is a different subject and a different line item. So I'll talk to you, we can talk about okay. that. I'll get your recommendations to help me think through that process okay. another time. Any other questions on the parking fees, Kathy? Well, I think I, I've already made it clear before, but I don't support the parking fees, not just because of the administration piece, but um, I don't, uh, when we did it last year, I felt that we were putting our budget adult issues on the backs of the students. Now, the parents may in fact be paying the parking fees, but I'm sure some of the students are paying them. Um, I know if my daughter was still in school, she'd be paying it herself. but. Um, I, I think we've talked a lot about our concerns over the fees that parents are paying. The fees for athletics, the booster contributions, SEEF contributions, and I know there's been lots of discussions in the past about how many more fees do we want to give to the parents. Um, and so, for me, the parking fees potentially become a slippery slope that first we have parking fees and then we've added something else and something else. And it concerns me that we start running down a path where we're a public school um, and we're not giving the same opportunities to all our students because of varying fees. So that's why I don't support the parking fees. Obviously, as last year, um, I voted against them, but the board, um, you know, majority said yes. And if the majority says yes again, then that's fine. But um, those are my reasons for not supporting them. So, thanks. Any other comments on the parking fees? I think last year was a different year. Um, uh, we were looking at um, a budget process where everyone was being asked to s sort of pitch in. Um, Parking, there are those of us who believe, myself included, that um, driving to school and parking at school is a privilege. Uh, the taxpayers pay um, quite a bit of money, I think between fifteen and $20,000 a year, to pave and plow and sand those lots. So a $50 fee um, a year did not seem excessive. Uh, we provide transportation. Uh, to school. It would be different, I think, if we didn't provide transportation. Um, but uh, I, I, I know it was controversial um, last year, but I did hear from as many people who thought it was a brilliant idea, parents, and could, um, you know, it gave them the opportunity to pass on some responsibility to their child for the privilege of driving their car to school. Um, if we do take it out of the budget, uh, it's going to have to come from, we're going to have to find $8,000 somewhere else. So I don't know um, where we'd want to find that. I mean, I think it's, uh, I mean, for myself, because I'm not, at, I'm not in favor of raising the budget from this maintenance budget.